Hi there. Welcome back to our video series of building recommendation systems with TensorFlow. My name is Wei, and I'm a developer advocate at Google. In this video, we're going to talk about an important topic in recommendation systems, the code start problem. Code start refers to the situation in which a recommendation system does not have enough information on the users or the candidate items, which leads to ineffective recommendations. This sometimes creates a huge business challenge. For example, if you are building a news website and you are not able to recommend the latest news, which are code items, to your users in an effective manner, the value of your site is significantly reduced. Generally speaking, there are three kinds of code start problems, user code start, item code start, and system code start. We will discuss each one of them. User code start refers to the situation in which you already have a recommender working with some users and items. But then a new user comes in, and that user has no interaction with any of the candidate items yet. In this case, the recommender knows nothing about this new user and is likely to have difficulty generating desirable recommendations. The general strategy to mitigate the user code start problem is to learn about the code user's preference as soon as possible. So there are a few common approaches to achieve that. The first one is to simply recommend popular items, which tends to draw attention to any user, including the code user. For example, if you visit YouTube for the first time, there will be a dedicated trending section. Another example, if you are building a hotel booking app, what you could do is to recommend the highest rated hotels close to the user's geographic location. The second approach is to directly ask the user to specify preference during first-time visits. For example, if you're building a movie recommendation app, you can ask what kind of movies a user prefers when the user opens your app for the first time. The challenge of code user start comes from the fact that the user embedding is unknown when the user comes in. So a third approach is to not use embedding, but instead use the sequence of item IDs to model user preference. This is exactly the sequential recommendation approach we have talked about in a previous video. Moving on to item code start. Item code start means a new candidate item arrives and no user has interacted with it, although you have historical data on all the users and other items. The general strategy to mitigate item code start is to elicit more user interactions on it. One easy way to achieve this is to create exposure to code items by setting up a dedicated new arrivals section in your app UI. Another common approach is to use content-based filtering, which could leverage item metadata and expert knowledge to recommend items based on item similarities. We briefly touched upon content-based filtering in a previous video. The example we gave is to have experts label apps in different categories. On top of that, you could leverage computer vision to analyze product images or NLP techniques to examine product descriptions. All these techniques can help you associate code items to similar items already in your recommendation engine. Incidentally, I should mention that real-world recommendation systems are often hybrid systems that consist of both content-based filtering and collaborative filtering. So content-based filtering is actually widely used. And as a last resort, you could just randomly show the new item to your users in the hope that some of them will interact with it. This is usually not very effective and should be avoided if possible. The last kind of code start is system code start. System code start is when you are starting from scratch and there is zero interaction between users and items. While system code start is even more challenging, you could leverage some of the techniques we already mentioned to bootstrap. For example, use content-based filtering extensively. Another way to tackle system code start is to use reinforcement learning. We discussed specifically how to use a multi-armed bandits with TF agents to explore and exploit at the same time in a previous video. Feel free to go back and review that video. One more technique is to use transfer learning. While this is not applicable to all cases, it may be useful in some. For example, if you have been operating an e-commerce website in your home country and are looking to expand into another country with similar products, you might be able to reuse the item embeddings in your home country and apply transfer learning. Before we wrap up today, I want to mention one more implementation tip, the hashing trick. 
The idea is to apply a hashing function to the user and item IDs so that the vocabulary can accommodate new users or items that come in after your model is trained and deployed. Keras has a built-in hashing layer specifically designed for this, so it's pretty straightforward to apply. Feel free to check out the link to learn more. Another way to handle new IDs is to make the embedding table dynamic, which is what we will discuss in the next video. So to summarize, today we discussed some common approaches to tackle the three kinds of CoStar problems. Hopefully, this video is a good starting point for you to mitigate the CoStar challenges. In the next video, we are going to talk about a community project, TensorFlow Recommenders add-ons. See you next time. <laughs>